A metaphor is a figure of speech that describes a subject by asserting that it is, on some point of comparison, the same as another otherwise unrelated object. It is a figure of speech comparing two unlike things without using either like, or as. It is not to be mistaken with a simile which does use like, or as in comparisons. Metaphor is a type of analogy and is closely related to other rhetorical figures of speech that achieve their effects via association, comparison or resemblance including allegory, hyperbole, and simile. One of the most prominent examples of a metaphor in English literature is the All the World's a Stage monologue from As You Like It. This quotation contains a metaphor because the world is not literally a stage. By figuratively asserting that the world is a stage, Shakespeare uses the points of comparison between the world and a stage to convey an understanding about the mechanics of the world and the lives of the people within it. The philosophy of rhetoric by I. A. Richards describes a metaphor as having two parts, the tenor and the vehicle. The tenor is the subject to which attributes are ascribed. The vehicle is the object whose attributes are borrowed. In the previous example, the world is compared to a stage, describing it with the attributes of the stage. The world is the tenor, and a stage is the vehicle. Men and women is a secondary tenor, players is the secondary vehicle. Other writers employ the general terms ground and figure to denote tenor and the vehicle. In cognitive linguistics, the terms target and source are used respectively. Etymology, the English metaphor derives from the 16th century Old French ma copyright taffel, which comes from the Latin metaphora, carrying over. In turn, from the Greek I one quarter I micron I I plus or minus I I I I transfer from I one quarter I micron I I plus or minus I I I per mil to carry over to transfer, and that from I one quarter I micron I I between plus I I I per mil to bear to carry. Comparison with other types of analogy metaphors are most frequently compared with similes. The Columbia Encyclopedia explains the difference as. A simile states that A is like B, a metaphor states that A is B or substitutes B for A. Where a metaphor asserts that two objects in the comparison are identical on the point of comparison, a simile merely asserts a similarity. For this reason a metaphor is generally considered more forceful than a simile. The metaphor category also contains these specialized types, allegory and extended metaphor wherein a story illustrates an important attribute of the subject. Catatresis, a mixed metaphor used by design and accident. Parable, an extended metaphor narrated as an anecdote illustrating a teaching such as in Aesop's fables, or Jesus' teaching method is told in the Bible. Pun, similar to a metaphor, a pun alludes to another term. However the main difference is that a pun is a frivolous allusion between two different things whereas a metaphor is a purposeful allusion between two different things. Metaphor like other types of analogy, can usefully be distinguished from metonymy as one of two fundamental modes of thought. Metaphor and analogy both work by bringing together two concepts from different conceptual domains, whereas metonymy works by using one element from a given domain to refer to another closely related element. Thus, a metaphor creates new links between otherwise distinct conceptual domains, whereas a metonymy relies on the existing links within them. Common types, a dead metaphor is one in which the sense of a transferred image is absent. Examples, to grasp a concept, and to gather what you've understood use physical action as a metaphor for understanding. Most people do not visualize the action a euro dead metaphors normally go unnoticed. Some people distinguish between a dead metaphor and a clitch a copyright. Others use dead metaphor to denote both. A mixed metaphor is one that leaps from one identification to a second identification inconsistent with the first. I smell a rat. But I'll nip him in the bud a Euro-Irish politician Boyle Roche. This form is often used as a parody of metaphor itself, if we can hit that bullseye then the rest of the dominoes will fall like a house of cards. Checkmate. A Euro Futurama character Zap Brannigan. Uses outside of rhetoric. The term metaphor is also used for the following terms that are not a part of rhetoric. A cognitive metaphor is the association of object to an experience outside the object's environment. A conceptual metaphor is an underlying association that is systematic in both language and thought, 
A root metaphor is the underlying worldview that shapes an individual's understanding of a situation. A nonlinguistic metaphor is an association between two nonlinguistic realms of experience. A visual metaphor uses an image to create the link between different ideas. Metaphors can also be implied and extended throughout pieces of literature. Conceptual metaphors Some theorists have suggested that metaphors are not merely stylistic, but that they are cognitively important as well. In Metaphors We Live By, George Lakoff and Mark Johnson argue that metaphors are pervasive in everyday life, not just in language, but also in thought and action. A common definition of a metaphor can be described as a comparison that shows how two things that are not alike in most ways are similar in another important way. They explain how a metaphor is simply understanding and experiencing one kind of thing in terms of another. The authors call this concept a conduit metaphor. By this they meant that a speaker can put ideas or objects into words or containers, and then send them along a channel, or conduit, to a listener who takes that idea or object out of the container and makes meaning of it. In other words, communication is something that ideas go into. The container is separate from the ideas themselves. Lockoff and Johnson give several examples of daily metaphors we use, such as argument is war, and time is money. Metaphors are widely used in context to describe personal meaning. The authors also suggest that communication can be viewed as a machine. Communication is not what one does with the machine, but is the machine itself. Nonlinguistic metaphors Metaphors can also map experience between two nonlinguistic realms. In The Dream Frontier, Mark Blechner describes musical metaphors, in which a piece of music can map to the personality and emotional life of a person. Musicologist Leonard Mayer demonstrated how purely rhythmic and harmonic events can express human emotions. Art theorist Robert Vischer argued that when we look at a painting, we feel ourselves into it by imagining our body in the posture of a non-human or inanimate object in the painting. For example, the painting The Solitary Tree by Caspar David Friedrich shows a tree with contorted, barren limbs. In looking at that painting, we imagine our limbs in a similarly contorted and barren shape, and that creates a feeling in us of strain and distress. Nonlinguistic metaphors may be the foundation of our experience of visual, musical, dance, and other art forms. In historical linguistics, in historical onomasiology or, more generally, in historical linguistics, metaphor is defined as semantic change based on similarity, that is, a similarity in form or function between the original concept named by a word and the target concept named by this word, x. Mouse, small, gray road and a small, gray, mouse-shaped computer device. Some recent linguistic theories view language as by its nature all metaphorical. Or that language in essence is metaphorical. Historical theories of metaphor, metaphor is style in speech and writing. Viewed as an aspect of speech and writing, metaphor qualifies as style, in particular, style characterized by a type of analogy. An expression that by implication suggests the likeness of one entity to another entity gives style to an item of speech or writing, whether the entities consist of objects, events, ideas, activities, attributes, or almost anything expressible in language. For example, in the first sentence of this paragraph, the word viewed serves as a metaphor for thought of, implying analogy of the process of seeing and the thought process. The phrase, viewed as an aspect of, projects the properties of seeing something from a particular perspective onto thinking about something from a particular perspective, that something in this case referring to metaphor, and that perspective in this case referring to the characteristics of speech and writing. As a characteristic of speech and writing, metaphors can serve the poetic imagination, Sylvia Plath, in her poem Cut, to compare the blood issuing from her cup thumb to the running of a million soldiers, redcoats, everyone. And, enabling Robert Frost, in The Road Not Taken, to compare one's life to a journey. Viewed also as an aspect of speech, metaphor can serve as a device for persuading the listener or reader of the speaker or writer's argument or thesis, the so-called rhetorical metaphor. Metaphor is foundational to our conceptual system. Cognitive linguists emphasize that metaphors serve to facilitate the understanding of one conceptual domain, typically an abstract one like life, or theories, 
or ideas, through expressions that relate to another, more familiar conceptual domain, typically a more concrete one like journey, or buildings, or food. Food for thought, we devour a book of raw facts, try to digest them, stew over them, let them simmer on the black burner, regurgitate them in discussions, cook up explanations, hoping they do not seem half-baked. Theories as buildings, we establish a foundation for them, a framework, support them with strong arguments, buttressing them with facts, hoping they will stand. Life is journey, some of us travel hopefully, others seem to have no direction, many lose their way. A convenient shorthand way of capturing this view of metaphor is the following, conceptual domain is conceptual domain, which is what is called a conceptual metaphor. A conceptual metaphor consists of two conceptual domains, in which one domain is understood in terms of another. A conceptual domain is any coherent organization of experience. Thus, for example, we have coherently organized knowledge about journeys that we rely on in understanding life. Lockoff and Johnson greatly contributed to establishing the importance of conceptual metaphor as a framework for thinking in language. In recent years many scholars have investigated the original ways in which writers use novel metaphors and question the fundamental frameworks of thinking implicit in conceptual metaphors. When considering the role conceptual metaphor plays in the worldview of the community, the problem becomes twofold. From a sociological, cultural, or philosophical perspective, the question becomes, to what extent ideologies maintain and impose conceptual patterns of thought by introducing, supporting, and adapting fundamental patterns of thinking metaphorically? To what extent does the ideology fashion and refashion the idea of the nation as a container with borders? How are enemies and outsiders represented? As diseases? As attackers? How are the metaphoric paths of fate? destiny, history, and progress represented? As the opening of an eternal monumental moment? Or as the path to communism? Though cognitive scholars have made some attempts to take on board the idea that different languages have evolved radically different concepts and conceptual metaphors, they have on the whole remained tied up in the somewhat reductive concept of worldview which derives from the sapper wharf hypothesis. The true source of ethno-linguistics and the thinker who contributed most to the debate on the relationship between culture, language, and linguistic communities was the German philologist Wilhelm von Humboldt. Humboldt remains, however, little known in English-speaking nations. Andrew Goatley, in Washing the Brain does take on board the dual problem of conceptual metaphor as a framework implicit in the language as a system, and the way individuals and ideologies negotiate conceptual metaphors. James W. Underhill, in Creating Worldviews, Ideology, Metaphor and Language, considers the way individual speech adopts and reinforces certain metaphoric paradigms. This involves a critique of both communist and fascist discourse. But Underhill's studies are situated in Czech and German, which allows him to demonstrate the ways individuals are both thinking within, and resisting the modes by which ideologies seek to appropriate key concepts such as the people, the state, history, and struggle. Though metaphors can be considered to be in language, Underhill's chapter on French, English and ethnolinguistics demonstrates that we cannot conceive of language or languages in anything other than metaphoric terms. French is a treasure, for example. English is a tool for liberating minorities engaging in debate in the global world. Underhill continues his investigation of the relationship between worldview and language in ethnolinguistics and cultural concepts, truth, love, hate and war. See also Notes References This article incorporates material from the Citizendium article Metaphor, which is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 imported license but not under the GFDL. Stefano Arduini Metaphors Roma, Edizioni di Storia e Letteratura. Aristotle. Poetics. Trans. I by Water. In the complete works of Aristotle, the revised Oxford translation 2 vols. Ed. Jonathan Barnes. Princeton, Princeton University Press. Max Black. Metaphor, Proceedings of the Aristotelian Society, 55 
PPA 273 Euro 294. Max Black. Models and Metaphors, Studies in Language and Philosophy, Ithaca, Cornell University Press. Max Black. More About Metaphor, In Aortony Metaphor and Thought. Clive Casey. Metaphor and Continental Philosophy, From Kant to Derrida. New York, Routledge, L. J. Cohen. The Semantics of Metaphor, In Aortony, Metaphor and Thought, Donald Davidson, What Metaphors Mean. Reprinted in Inquiries into Truth and Interpretation, Oxford, Oxford University Press. Jacques Derrida. White Mythology, Metaphor in the Text of Philosophy. In Margins of Philosophy. Trans. Alan Bass. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. Rena Copyright Durbins and Rolf Parr Paragraph Rings, Ed Metaphor and Metonymy and Contrast. Berlin Mouton de Guitra, Fass, Dan. Metonymy and Metaphor, What's the Difference? Proceedings of the Twelfth Conference on Computational Linguistics 1 PPA 177 Euro 81 doi, 10.311-9913635.991671. ISBN A 963-8431-56-3A, Jacobson, Roman. Two Aspects of Language and Two Types of Aphasic Disturbances. In Linda War Monique Monver Burston. On Language. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press PPA 115 Euro 133. ISBN A 0-674-63536-1A, Lukoff, G. And Johnson, M. Metaphors We Live By, Chapters 1 Euro 3, Lukoff, George. Metaphors We Live By. Chicago, Illinois, The University of Chicago Press. ISBN A 0-226-46801-1A. Low, Graham. An essay is a person. In Cameron, Lynn. Low, Graham. Researching and Applying Metaphor. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press PPA 221 Euro 48. ISBN A 978-0-521-64964-3A, Peters, Wim. Metonymy as a Cross-Lingual Phenomenon. Proceedings of the ACL 2003 Workshop on Lexicon and Figurative Language 14 PPA 1 Euro 9 DOI, 101115 1118975.1118976A, David Punter. Metaphor, London, Routledge. Paul Ricoeur. The Rule of Metaphor, Multidisciplinary Studies in the Creation of Meaning in Language, Trans. Robert Schnee with Kathleen McLaughlin and John Costello, S.J., London, Routledge and Kagan Paul 1978. I.A. Richards' The Philosophy of Rhetoric. Oxford, Oxford University Press. John Searle. Metaphor, in Aortony Metaphor and Thought. Cambridge University Press. Underhill, James W., Creating Worldviews, Metaphor, Ideology and Language, Edinburgh UP, 2011. Haskberger, Ruth. The Structure of Metaphor. The Kenyan Review 5, 433 Euro 443. Retrieved October 11, 2013. A. Rudman, Floyd W. Having, A Brief History of Metaphor and Meaning. Syracuse Law Review 42, 163. Retrieved October 11, 2013. A, external links, History of Metaphor on in our time at the BBC. A short history of metaphor, audio illustrations of metaphor as figure of speech, top 10 metaphors of 2008, Shakespeare's metaphors, metaphor examples, list of ancient Greek words starting with I 1 quarter I micron I I plus or minus, on Perseus.